Side Hustle Show 218, how to build a six-figure side hustle on Fiverr. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show, where aspiring part-time entrepreneurs learn how to turn their side hustle dreams into reality. Because your nine to five may make you a living, but your five to nine makes you alive. And now your host, Nick Loper. What's up? What's up? Nick Loper here. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show, where it's all about ideas, action, and results. How about results first? My guest today made over $100,000 in profit in 18 months, part-time selling services, workbooks, and other downloadable products on Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. It's been more than 100 episodes since our last Fiverr episode, and today, Kendall Rizzo is going to walk us through everything she did to build her business on one of my favorite Buy Buttons platforms, so you can take that advice and apply it to your own hustle. We'll talk about what you can sell, how to price your services and packages, and how to make this business involve less and less of your own time. In addition to being a six-figure Fiverr seller, Kendall is a crowdfunding expert, world traveler, and an Ironman triathlete. Wow. You can learn more about her at leadandlaunch.com. Notes, links, and a free download with all of Kendall's top tips from this conversation are at sidehustlenation.com slash Kendall. It's K-E-N-D-E-L-L. Before we dive in, let me take a moment to thank today's sponsor, FreshBooks.com. The all-new FreshBooks is transforming how freelancers, side hustlers, and small business owners deal with their day-to-day paperwork. The award-winning cloud accounting software has been redesigned from the ground up and custom-built for exactly the way we work. Visit FreshBooks.com slash side hustle to start your 30-day free trial today. I'll be back to tell you a little bit more about what's new with FreshBooks, plus my top takeaways from this chat with Kendall after the interview. One important thing to note is that this wasn't Kendall's first attempt at selling on Fiverr. Her first effort was a flop with no customers and nobody buying her gigs. Yet she decided to give it another shot. Ready? Let's do it. I was struggling with freelancing on different platforms and all the different hats that you have to wear when you freelance. If you want to do a good job, it leaves very little time left over for you to actually do the job that you were hired to do. So I loved the idea of Fiverr. I loved that I could put up certain services, the clients would come to me, and then I could just focus on delivering that product or service. So initially made the gigs for Fiverr. And in retrospect, I think I made gigs, I wanted my gigs to fit in on Fiverr. So I looked at other gigs, what other people were doing, and I made very similar gigs to what other people had up there, which I think in retrospect, ended up being the reason why I had failed. So when I came back the second time around, I had decided to do whatever it took. And my skills are not, as you know, on Fiverr, some of the gigs that are offered are really out there. You know, people do all sorts of different marketing stuff and all sorts of services. I'm doing copywriting, you know, so (laughs) I have to think of ways to make my gigs really stand out. My only goal in the beginning was just to get positive feedback, get the five-star ratings on the site, and really just to sell. Well, there's something to that in looking at the popular gigs, looking at what's selling, and trying to emulate those, because you know there's a proven demand for those. Sure, sure. So I was on the right path, but I think that I leaned more towards just trying to fit in with the rest of the gigs, whereas in the beginning, I think that while you can use those same services to see what's popular. You also need to make them your own to help them stand out. Once you grow on Fiverr, I think you can rely on your positive reviews. And I'm not quite sure of the algorithms they use on the site, but you can rely on the Fiverr traffic more as you grow with the site. But I think in the beginning, it really pays to think of how you can stand out. So I had my second time around, I have list of services that I was confident in, copywriting and some marketing and simple things like writing an email sequence and social media posting. So I have this list of skills and I had recently been asked by quite a few clients to help with their crowdfunding campaigns. So I started helping them a little bit. And by the time I got to Fiverr, I decided to take my skills and market them towards people that were looking to do a crowdfunding campaign. So that was the first thing that I did different from the first time is all of my gigs were marketed towards someone who was about to launch a crowdfunding campaign. Oh, okay. So it was kind of like combining this skill set of copywriting, this skill set of marketing with a spe- like a very specific niche. Mm-hmm. I think too, in the first time around is I was also nervous. And I think everyone does this. We're always nervous that we're going to kind of pigeonhole ourselves into one type of job, get only getting one type of job. But it ended up, I believe, being the thing that helped me thrive because almost instantly I was getting emails, even if 
through the fiber site. I was getting messages just asking about crowdfunding and how I could help them. So it was definitely piquing people's interest and I could see it instantly that it was standing out from just offering my copywriting skills as I had the first time. Okay. Did you have a hard time kind of like micro servicing these these ideas <laughs> down into something that you could sell for $5 that would still be worth your time? That's a hard question because I was so excited to be on the platform and I had when I was previously freelancing on my own on different all different platforms, sometimes it was just the nature of the working clients weren't paying their invoice or sometimes you kind of get strung along with work and no matter I felt like no matter what job I was doing, I was working for free a little bit. So I kind of looked at it as almost where I was still getting paid, but I'm still almost working for free a little bit in the beginning, but I gained a ton of experience and it was a short period of time. I'm not quite sure how long it is now, but I think it's about a month you have to be on the site and maybe 10 orders. That sounds familiar. 10 orders kind of get up to level one and then you can add more upsells and you kind of have a little more flexibility with what you can do. So it sounds like a little bit of hustle, look a little bit working for less than you would like at the onset to kind of build a portfolio. Is that still accurate? Yeah. And when you're focused on the results, like when I focus more on crowdfunding, Sure, you give those results to the client and you deliver your job, but you also have that achievement in your portfolio that you can take with you. It really paid off in the long run because then when I got to bigger clients and higher orders, I didn't just have a bunch of $5 orders to show for myself because I didn't give out $5 orders. I gave out what I would generally give out for a much higher ticket service. <laughs> Sorry, what do you mean by that? Can you explain that again? So if someone ordered a $5 gig, I never felt like I wanted to give them $5 worth of my work. Oh, okay. So I always tried to over deliver so that by the time I was getting to $300 orders, $500 orders and beyond, I had already practiced giving those services. I already knew what the client was going to want. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I really like a couple things here. You know, the first was to combine what you can do with like a particular niche. And so I did the same thing. Like I started my freelance editing business on Fiverr, proofreading business, and said, I will proofread your nonfiction book. I think it was like nonfiction book or like your business Kindle book or something. Like yeah. very, look, I don't want to read your vampire romance novel. Like this is my specialty. And, and even in my video, it was like, you can find cheaper proofreaders. Even on Fiverr, you can find cheaper people. But like, do you want them? I don't know. <laughs> and so I was yeah. like trying to like call out, like trying to almost be like, you don't want this. And this comes back from like when I had his house painting business and one of the most successful guys in the company gets up there at the end of the year. And he tells a story about going back to this house eight times, trying to close this little old lady on, let me paint your house. And she's like, I've got another bid, you know, hold on. I've got another contractor coming out. And ultimately she's like, I got this other bid. It was for like $800 or something. And his bid was like 2000. And he's like, I don't think you want an $800 paint job. And that was ultimately what sealed the deal for him. Yeah. Okay. That's like a, it's a pretty powerful thing. No, I've had the same conversation with clients before because they come to you and they say, well, there's another seller that's selling at this price. And sometimes I have to tell them, of course, make any choice that you feel that you need to make, but you don't want to spend only X amount of dollars on your crowdfunding campaign because a crowdfunding campaign is going to be successful or it's not going to be successful. And don't give up a small amount of money for it not to be successful. You'd rather spend more and get the results that you're looking for. Yeah. And you could say that now because a few years ago, you were that $5 seller. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Anything you did on the gigs themselves to kind of, because I imagine there are other people saying, hey, I'll write your Kickstarter description or sales letter or whatever. Anything that you did in your title or your description to make that a no-brainer for the for the client? So now you're really going to think that I'm crazy. But in the beginning, to get through those first 10, 20 orders, I told them that I would deliver within, I believe I said everything, between 24 and 48 hours. Wow. And at the time, I don't even think Fiverr had a button or an option for that, especially because I was a new seller. So what I had to do was take the... Fiverr image. So, you know, every gig you get to create your own image. So I would create the image and I would put my gig on the image. So I would put exactly what I was going to do. So I'll write you a five email sequence campaign for your crowdfunding campaign and I will deliver it within 48 hours. 
Okay, and so you're putting that in the image itself because you're not necessarily allowed to put that in the gig title? Well, you could put it in the title. I know that you only have so many characters, one. Yeah. And so some of them I might have put them in, but then also you don't really have the button on Fiverr to do it. So once you start moving up, as you know, you have the button to do an express delivery and you can charge more for those things. But I wanted to make sure that people knew that it was part of my $5 offer. Okay. Fair enough. I really like that. It's kind of like the YouTube thumbnail. It's kind of it's another marketing channel. You know, it's another visual reminder yeah. of what it is. And I found this to be true on Fiverr as a buyer. You know, some popular gig that I favorited a couple of years ago now all of a sudden has 30 or 40 orders in the queue. And they're like 15 days out on delivery and not planning ahead super well. Like, well, shoot, I could really use this today. And so you go back to the list and you're like, well, here's another, here's a newer seller who's hungry and says, yeah, I can deliver this tomorrow. Like, well, it's better than two weeks from now. That's one way for new sellers to break into competitive areas is like on that delivery time, competing on delivery time when you can't compete yet on the feedback ratings. Sure. And just creating that relationship with the client because the client is able to speak to you, then order, and then within 24 hours, see your work. So it just instantly creates that relationship with the client where I had clients that they ordered within the first 24 hours of me, you could say, launching my Fiverr site the second time. And then they would order again and again and again. And then they would come back. And if I didn't offer that service, they would ask, can you write this for me? You know, because they know that you will do it. You'll do it on time. And there's just something to be said for doing it, doing exactly what you say you're going to do and turning things in on time. I asked Kendall how long this hustle phase lasted. And she said, really not that long, likening it to a sprint to get her Fiverr business up and running. And she explained as soon as she was swamped, she would double her rates. And then when she was swamped again at the new raise, she would double them again, continue to scale up and uh, grow her business in that way for more premium positioning. And all the while, she's building her client base in her portfolio. Next, I was curious how she was managing client expectations and managing and maintaining excellent feedback with all these different projects in the air. Did you ever get burned with like a flood of orders that you couldn't do in that promised really tight delivery timeline? I mean, of course, I've had late orders before. You have a 24-hour grace period on Fiverr where your order is technically late, but the buyer can't cancel it yet. So you have like that 24-hour grace period to play around with. If clients complain about something more than once, usually it's just a discrepancy on your Fiverr page. So for me, I would had explained something wrong to them on about what they were the deliverables of the or the scope of the work. You know, if you hear things more than once, you realize, oh, wait, I got to go back into the gig and change it. So I always like to think of all my gigs as a work in progress. And that's one of my favorite things about Fiverr is that there's no other platform that gets that type of traffic where you're constantly getting that many eyeballs on your gigs and you can almost instantly test new things, try new things out and see how people react to it. Now, did you really dive deep into the testing thing where I know you're allowed to have like 20 different gigs at one time? Did you put a million, did you put all 20 of them up there with like different titles, like tweaking a couple words? No, I didn't. I wasn't that crazy, but I was close. I probably had like nine or 10 was maybe the most at the same time. And they were all geared towards crowdfunding campaigns or helping other freelancers. As far as testing, I didn't get that far into it, but I would, if it came to something like an ebook or a downloadable product or a workbook, I would definitely post the gig before I would create the product. So maybe I had all the raw information, but I hadn't composed it yet or put it all together. I would put it up on Fiverr and see if people were interested in it. And then when they were, I would have that however long to deliver that five days or a week. Okay. You know, obviously you can't do the 24 hours on that one. And then I would put it together. And some of my best-selling products were products that I wasn't really sure how the people would react to it. And then it ended up being super successful. A couple things here. Each gig you create is another chance to be discovered in Fiverr's search engine. So it might make sense to cast a wide net there. And I love this quick validation strategy. Look, before creating a new product, let's put a description up there for sale and see if anybody bites. So I asked Kendall to elaborate a little bit on her digital product strategy on Fiverr maybe six months into it. And at this point, I'd worked on a lot of crowdfunding campaigns and I'd seen a lot of different campaigns and I worked for Fundable and I was consulting for them on different equity campaigns. So I felt like I had all this information for someone who 
was just starting a crowdfunding campaign and it can be really overwhelming all the different options you have for a campaign. So I knew I had all the information for marketing a campaign, fleshing out your idea, picking a platform, but I didn't know if people just wanted the service. They don't want to learn. They just want me to write it or help them yeah. or if they wanted to put their idea on paper and go through the workbook. So I created a crowdfunding workbook. And I posted it on the site and I even did different sizes. So like a starter pack was like a 20 page workbook and it went all the way up to my full workbook, which was almost like an e-course. And that was a 60 page workbook and it had, it was obviously more expensive and I wasn't sure if that was what the market was looking for. And really fast after I had posted it, people started buying it. So I remember doing that because it was like three days straight of just gathering all this information and making sure that it read really well and it flowed nicely. And then I started getting it out to customers and it's one of my best selling gigs. And, And I believe it to be super helpful. I think that if you're just starting a crowdfunding campaign, there's just so much information out there that it's nice to have something to point you in the right direction. And this is something that it doesn't take you any time to deliver now. It took, you some, it took you some time to build and create, but now each order, you can just hit send. Exactly. Yeah. It takes no time to deliver it. Oh my gosh. I love this. <laughs> to fill the order. <laughs> I love this. Even, so like, I don't know, I've been on Fiverr for like three and a half years as a seller and it's still a thrill. Even like it's just $4. Like every time somebody buys like one of my eBooks and one of my digital products on Fiverr, it's like, that was awesome. You know, it took two seconds. So I love it. Yeah, it's very different. Yeah. It's very different from regular freelancing. When you get those orders start to come in, it's like, it's very exciting. I can remember waking up the morning after I had launched the second time and I had even just a few orders. It feels so nice when the clients are coming to you and you can just focus on whatever it is that you love doing. It's different. It feels good. Yeah. But this is kind of stepping up that even further, like saying, hey, this is a high value digital product Mm -hmm. and even more than just five dollars so that's that's kind of cool yeah i have a few of them actually i also did one for freelancers where when i finally was done bidding on work and i was just going full-time to either well not full-time but i was part-time with fiverr and i was part-time just working one-on-one with clients and consulting i took all the bids that were kind of like my go-to bids for freelancing the ones that helped me land the most jobs say, and I put them all together into an ebook. And I also sold those on Fiverr. People loved it because sometimes when you're first starting out, you don't know where to start. And it gave people a starting point for new freelancers. All right. Plug it, plug it. What's the Fiverr username? Oh, it's really boring. (laughs) Kendall R. (laughs) All right. We'll link that up in the show notes. You guys go find that, check it out, see what it's all about. Okay. So what comes next? Let's talk about increasing the average order value. You touched on it a little bit with these higher priced digital products. And so really Fiverr over the last few years has really stepped up their game because they make a percentage of the sale, whether the sale is $5 or whether the sale is $10,000, like the narco fighter told us, where they've added a lot of functionality to do different packages, to do custom orders, to do all that stuff. So can you speak to how you've raised your average order value over the past couple of years? So one of the obvious ways to increase your orders are to start delivering them faster. So as I became more established on the site, obviously all my gigs weren't going in 24 hours. I moved them back to the regular five day or seven days. You have to move them to the five or seven days. Otherwise, what is the value to pay extra to get it delivered in one day, right? So you're talking about the express delivery option as an as an upsell? Yes. Okay. That's one way, obviously, to increase your sale per customer. But I would say, actually, when I started to really increase my ticket sizes were when I started to combine gigs. So in the beginning, because they were only $5, each piece that I would do of a crowdfunding campaign was a different gig. So one gig was to purchase a service where I would write the perks. And the next one was to buy the copy for the actual campaign. And the next one was for the email campaign. So when I started to move up and I could charge more, I started combining them. So I would make almost like this ultimate crowdfunding package where they could start with copy and they could add on perks and they could add on a press release and they can add on email marketing. And that was really great because I would always want the client to get results because when the client gets results, this is good. This is a win-win, right? This is good for both of us because 
if I just hand over 500 words of copy and they don't know what to do with it or they don't have the complete package, it doesn't do either of us any good. It doesn't help them get closer to their goal. And then I don't have their achievement in my portfolio either. So I really liked when I started combining my gigs because then I could really see the results. So I think that's a great way to increase your ticket prices. So when you say combining, just to clarify, is that down in the extras? You can kind of cross-reference your gigs? Yeah. So I started creating the first time I really started increasing my pricing instead of having them all separate. So I went from having maybe eight or nine gigs to having maybe four or five because I started pairing them together. So I would have marketing all together. So maybe social media posts, emails, a press release, and each of those were an add-on. So it's an extra hundred dollars to get a press release. It's an extra hundred to deliver the press release. It's an extra hundred to have social media postings written out for you. And then it's another hundred to actually post them onto your site. So I would say combining them was that was the first time I increased my pricing. And the second time was by creating packages. And that's because the packaging is relatively new. I want to say in the past six months, they started using packaging where you can create packages for your client. Yeah, like kind of a good, better, best, small, medium, large type of thing, which is really cool. Yeah, I I actually like that a lot because it's easier for me. One of the number one questions I get is, what's best for me? The clients ask me, what's the best gig for me to purchase or what do I need? So that was a really easy way for me to help them see where they're at and what gig is best going to meet their needs because you can label them as such. Okay. What's an average order for you these days? Average, if you, I'm sure the average is much higher if we move out the $5 because you still get like, I still have $5 orders come in. I still keep those up. I'm, I'm not even sure you could take it down if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say the average is between 500 and 900. That's the range where they come in now. Wow. That's another thing is I want, want people to know that are thinking about doing Fiverr. That's a lot higher than I was expecting. Yeah. <laughs> but the buyers spend money on Fiverr. And many of these orders, the people come right on and order. So people spend money on Fiverr and more than just $5. Yeah. And that's not something I would have expected in the beginning. My prices obviously just naturally went up. But now still, as I see those huge orders come in, it really surprises me the range of buyers that come to the Fiverr site. Yeah, you're kind of getting me excited to dive back into some of this stuff. I'm on one of your gigs today. So this is I will create your crowdfunding marketing plan. And there's three packages on the page. Basic for $225, standard for $575, and then premium for $975. And people just click the button and and say, hey, look, this has positive reviews. You seem like a legit seller without even like (laughs) emailing you, without even messaging you. Yeah. And that's kind of what I was getting at the first time is I'm not a salesperson, but I think that you would call this like a cold sale, you know, like they just come on and they order and they're happy customers because I've been delivering really great services from the beginning, like even before I was charging the prices that I think that they're worth. So I've kind of been developing these systems for a long time. So now that I can really deliver them with confidence, knowing that they're worth every penny before you go to launch your crowdfunding campaign. It sounds like you've really built up your expertise on the platform in that area and it's paying off. And never would I, in my opinion, never would I have been able to do that if I was just freelancing on different platforms all over the place, word of mouth. It felt so fragmented. And I remember being just, I felt like it. I could never focus on one thing. I give Fiverr a lot of credit because they take over a lot of the jobs that you, freelancers have, invoicing and even just dealing with small client issues and the marketing. You, you don't have to worry about anything, but just delivering your orders. So it's given me a lot of freedom. Um, just in terms of like an organized, you know, central depository of like workflow and all that stuff. Exactly. I mean, it sounds really simple, like, okay, just stay organized, Kendall, you know, but it's actually hard when you have clients. At one point I had clients in almost every time zone and every client uses a different software and prefers a different medium for communication. So by the time you've opened up all your different email and Skype and text messaging and voicemail and and you've returned everything, it's almost like, and then you start all over again. You don't really have any time to, to grow as a freelancer and grow your skills and dig deep into what you're doing so that you can provide value. So Fiverr takes care of all of that for you. Have you ever read the book 
get things done or getting things done GTD. Yeah. I feel like, and I don't know anyone on the other side of Fiverr, so this is just my opinion, but I feel like Fiverr is very GTD in their system <laughs> because you can always see what's up next and you can always, you can always bop into your Fiverr site and just return a quick email or because they're all in one spot and you always know what's pending and what's next and what needs to be done. So it's helped, you know, I'm naturally not the most organized person, but it's helped me stay really focused and really, really organized. So I give them a lot of credit and they always have the, they help you create the canned responses and things like that. So you can always stay attentive with your clients and things like that, that are just harder to do when you're spread across so many different ways to communicate. Yeah, absolutely. I kind of found that to be true too. And it's been a few years, but when the orders were really flowing through for like the site audits that I was doing, it's just like, all right, let's go knock this out in order. This is the first one. You just try to keep up with the flow of it. And they, their interface has improved over the years and it definitely makes things easier than trying to like, like you said, manage all this on your own. So Kendall, this is fascinating stuff. Like definitely it's kind of rekindled my excitement <laughs> in the platform. Like I'm like, dude, why didn't I think of that? Or trying to figure out, okay, well, shoot, how can I make a $60 deliverable there? So, But remember, you don't have to make it. All you have to do is think of it and then put it up on the site, see what your audience thinks of it, get some eyes on it. And then when they order it, then you can create it then. But that's the nice thing is you don't have to spend weeks creating a product before you've talked to your audience. Even better, even better. That's like, that's probably the biggest advantage, right? So Fiverr is, I think it's fallen a little bit, but probably still a top 100 site in the entire world in terms of traffic. Just lots and lots of eyeballs out there. And even in whatever niche you're after here, you know, I like, you know, again, combo of what you can do with some other trending niche and, and be off to the races. So Kendall, again, leadandlaunch.com is her site and the crowdfunding stuff is over at successfullyfunded.co. Thank you so much for joining me. And let's wrap this up with your number one tip for Side Hustle Nation. It doesn't have to be Fiverr related, but if it is, that's all good too. If I could go back in time and I just started freelancing, I wish someone would have told me to take time for yourself, for your business, for your business self, because you forget some of the things that you do as time goes by. And I wish I would have kept track of all the achievements and the things that you've built and the things that you've done. I think sometimes when we start freelancing, we forget that we're also our own boss. And so it's good to do now every month I do where I sit down and think about what I did over the past month, what I'll do for the following month. So I know it's not very exciting tip, but <laughs> it's good to have that portfolio and start building it as soon as you can. No, absolutely. This is a great practice and something I've been trying to do through my quarterly progress reports. Because yeah, month to month, even you know week to week, day to day, you don't see it. But then when you zoom out, you're like, oh, okay. I guess I did move. I guess I moved the needle a little bit. You know, as you level up, that kind of becomes the new normal, and then you kind of forget where you came from. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I really like that one. And if you want to make it an even more valuable tip, those meetings that you have with yourself where you're kind of reviewing what your clients have been telling you and what you want to do in the future. That's where I come up with new products because the clients tell you what they want. It's just a matter of taking the time to sit down and listen to them. So I think that's when you can come up with some really great products. Very cool. You got my gears turning and excited to play with some of this stuff. <laughs> so Kendall, thanks so much <laughs> and uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Thank you for having me. Bye. This edition of the Side Hustle Show is sponsored by FreshBooks. I've been telling you about their innovative cloud accounting service for a while, which, by the way, started as a side hustle. Now, this software was built specifically for freelancers, side hustlers, and entrepreneurs like us, and they actually just completed a redesign of the entire software from the ground up to make it even easier to use. Now, let me talk about invoicing for a minute because everybody needs a way to get paid, and this was the feature that first drew me to FreshBooks. So number one, it takes as little as 30 seconds to create an, an invoice. There, are, You don't have to worry about formatting or formulas, just really simple, clean, professional-looking invoices. Number two, you can add your own logo, your own color scheme, so that your invoice really re reflects your brand. Third, when you email a client uh, an invoice, FreshBooks is going to show you whether or not they've seen it which I think is a cool feature, kind of big brother-ish, but kind of cool. Uh, fourth, if you're working on a big project, you can ask for a deposit up front. And fifth, with just a couple of clicks, you can set up to receive credit card payments from clients. Uh, FreshBooks is offering a 30-day unrestricted free trial for Side Hustle Show listeners. And to claim it, all you have to do is go to freshbooks.com slash side hustle and enter the Side Hustle Show in the How Did You Hear About Us section. That's freshbooks.com slash side hustle to start your 30-day free trial today.
All right, my top takeaways from this chat with Kendall. Man, the right words are worth a lot of money to the right people, aren't they? Number one, hustle to start. To get your initial traction, you might have to work harder for less than you might like. Given the level of competition, that seems like the price of admission these days, especially on a platform like Fiverr. But if you can stick with it, if you can stick with it, good things can happen. Takeaway number two uh, is to level up. You know, raise your rate. Think about what the client really wants. In Kendall's case, they don't want a description for their crowdfunding campaign. They want a successful crowdfunding campaign. So how can you help them with their true want? Maybe that's the uh, the why behind the why of, why of why they're ordering from you. And takeaway number three is to productize, to take what you've learned and put it into digital products and service packages at higher price points. I think what Kendall has done is absolutely genius on that front, having written and done you know hundreds of these different campaigns over the years. She has you know productized her expertise in uh, in that in those form those different workbooks and even in the templates that she uses to deliver this work when somebody does order her, her gig or you know her high price gig so i really like that i thought that was a super smart way to go about it be sure to hit up side hustle nation.com slash kendall for all the links and resources mentioned and to download the free pdf highlight reel from this conversation again that's side hustle nation.com slash kendall k-e-n-d-e-l-l that's it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, let's go out there and make something happen. And I'll catch you in the next edition of The Side Hustle Show, where I'm diving back into the old listener mailbag for another installment of 20 Questions with Nick. I'll see you then. Hustle on. Thanks for listening to The Side Hustle Show at www.sidehustlenation.com. 